Hi, in this demonstration, we look at the analysis of another office document containing the malicious macro code. So this is the document. So let me open this. You see that there is a malicious document and uh, it is uh, you can enable the content, but let's bring up the macro code by pressing Alt F11. And in my previous demonstrations, there were three video demos that I covered. I, I mentioned that uh, I showed you how to debug the macro code in those three video demonstration. In case if you have not watched those videos, I encourage you to watch those videos because there were many concepts that were covered, which I will not cover uh, uh, cover here again. Again, okay. So in those in in those previous video demonstration, I mentioned that uh, while while uh, the best way to debug the best way to analyze the macro code is by debugging, and I also mentioned where to set the breakpoint. I told that. The best place to set the breakpoint would be the uh, set a breakpoint at the auto executable functions. These are some of the functions which get executed whenever the document or the workbook is uh, is opened. So this is this is would be the best place to set a breakpoint. But if you look at this doc this macro code here, this macro code does not contain any of those auto executable functions. So what this means is that. If, if you open the document and enable the macro, it will not execute on its own. So which means it is waiting for some kind of user. It, it, it requires some kind of user interaction. So if you look at this document, you will see that there are two image files. Here, it is expecting the user to click on one of these image file. And when you click on one of these image file, some function would get executed. That function will be this one, image one dot click or image one two dot click depending on which image you click on. So now we know that there is no auto executable function, but the, the best place to set the breakpoint is at either this point or at this point. So and I showed you in the previous demonstration how we can debug the malware. We can trigger an error to debug the macro code within its original document because uh, debugging the macro code within the original document is there. There is no easy method to do that. So we came out with a workaround. So let me show you that workaround here. So I'm going to add a statement like hello one and hello two. The idea of that is uh, I'm going to save it. The idea of that is uh, when I open this document, okay. Uh, uh, so that when I click this image it can trigger an error and then uh, it will set a breakpoint on its own. We'll see that. But let me enable the content and let me show you that uh, you'll see that there, there will be in, there, nothing much will happen here because there is no auto executable function. Now, if you are uh, if you're running this uh, uh, document in a sandbox, it will not show any behavior because it is expecting uh, it is it, it requires a user interaction. Let's say the malicious activity will be triggered only when someone clicks on an image. So we will click on one of these image here. You see that this function got executed and it triggered an error at this point. The idea of triggering an error is so that when I click on OK, it will automatically set the breakpoint. And now I can remove this statement. All right. Now I can debug the malware. So in case if you're if in case if you're if it is not clear, please watch the previous three videos. So you'll get an idea of uh, why we followed this technique. OK, and then you see that it calls a function in QFWM here, right? So which is here, which in turn calls a function QFULOS and then the parameter to this QFU LOS function is this particular uh, this particular variable, which is which itself is a function, right? So which means first this function will get called. The result of that function will be passed as parameter to this function. So what I'll do is I will single step. So first we will analyze this MIBYQ function, and if you see here. There is a there is a function called D, which takes some encrypted string. As you can see, the code is heavily obfuscated. It takes some uh, it takes some encrypted string as the parameter and this it does something and stores it in this variable. So what we'll do is let's not bother looking at this function. Let's step over step over the code 
and let's see what's in this variable so that will give an idea of what's in what what did what did this function decrypt to right and also in the previous video i showed you that the best way to examine the content of the variable is by looking at the locals window okay uh, you see that I mean the locals window at this point there is an empty string in this variable I'll press shift F8 it will step over the function and you see that it decrypted a string which looks like a PowerShell script right so it looks like this is a PowerShell script what I'll do is I'll copy this content into notepad plus plus let's see what it is okay so let me word wrap it you see that this is the content of the variable and this is the script you see that it's a powershell script it looks like it is going to download a file which is which is downloading from this particular domain demitartgourmet.com and looks like it is going to download an executable file right so this is a powershell script at this point now we know that uh, the malware actually decrypted used this function to decrypt this powershell script the and then when i press f8 you'll see that it comes to this function because i told you after executing this function it is going to pass that the content of the function to this particular function here we are in this function now now you see that it is creating some object right and storing it in this variable let me single step oops let me so i didn't want to get inside this function let's see You see that previously it created a object and if you examine this variable you will see that it's a shell object and then what it's doing is it's going to run something so what it's going to run it's going to run whatever is in the content of this variable jvrkz which is nothing but the powershell script so basically now we know that the malware decoded this powershell script and then what it's doing is it is going to run this powershell script but before i run this script what i'm going to do is i'm going to my linux machine i'll i'll capture the network on uh, i'll i'll capture the packets on this system because i told you in my previous video demonstration that they the gateway for my windows machine is set to the linux machine i so that all the traffic will go through this machine and also on the Linux machine, I'm simulating all the services using INET SIM so that we can give fake response to the malware. Okay. So before running the script, uh, I've run the packet capture. Now let me press F8. And as you can see, there is a DNS request to this particular domain, which got resolved to this IP address because the INET SIM uh, was simulating the DNS service as well. So once it resolves a domain, what it's going to do is, it is going to uh, connect to this domain and it's going to download an executable file. And I, in, in my previous videos, I showed you that when whenever inetsim sees a request to download an executable file, it will give its own executable file. It will give a fake executable file back. Right, so that's what it it gave back. So you see that it gave a fake executable by a fa uh, file back to the macro code. Now you see that it the fake executable file was executed. That is the that is this prompt uh, as a result of executing the fake binary that was served by the inet sim. So now we know the functionality of this macro code. Uh, the, now we know that the functionality of this macro code is a downloader, but it was able to decrypt the string which is a powershell script and it ran the powershell script which which in turn downloaded an executable file from the command and control server and executed it so this is a downloader component so as the idea of showing this demo was uh, that not always uh, if you're relying on sandbox analysis the sandbox analysis might not work because sometimes uh, the the office documents or the macro code might require a user interaction uh, with this, I complete the analysis of this, uh, this macro code. I hope you liked it. Uh, thank you for watching.